everyone, it's Frankie Liu. I'm coming to you from the deck of the Grow Together Homestead, where, believe it or not, even though it's freezing here, it's the end of April, and it literally is zero degrees here today. I am starting to prep some more sunflowers to put out in my garden. I've been growing them the last few years in milk jugs. And there's more about that in other videos if you like. But here in Southern Alberta, we have an extremely short growing season where I am in particular. Sometimes it's less than 90 days between frosts. Well, I do like to direct sow some sunflowers, try to say that four times quickly. I um, find that I do like to also have a backup plan and have some that have started early because more than once in the history here on the farm, a bunch of stuff will just be coming to head and then we get our first frost at the end of August and those poor sunflowers don't make it the ones that we direct sow. So Angus won't just be disappointed because he loves them and also so I will have lots of sunflowers for all the different uses I'm going to talk about right now. I also start some early and I've got three that I'm putting out in the yard today. I've got Bright Brandelier which is a nice multi-headed sunflower. I'm going to talk about why those might be good later. I've got the giant mammoth sunflower, okay, and those are the ones that you're used to eating probably. And then I also have here cinnamon sun um, sunflower, which I find that a lot of the smaller birds like. Now one of the reasons I'm here today is because honestly, up until this year, we've mostly been growing sunflowers for the birds and the bees. Um, they love them. I put a sunflower head at the top of this and they've almost finished picking those off every year we often uh, this year we often will pull ahead and just put it over here on the feeding station and the birds love it okay so that's one of the reasons we've grown it is we really really enjoy having lots of birds around our farm we especially in the winter when it's not a lot of gardening going around being able to look out the window and see the birds enjoy our sunflowers makes us very happy we also are beekeepers and um, i'm going to show you a couple photos here in, in a minute about the birds and the bees and the sunflowers because the sunflower is a very special plant okay and it's kind of the dream plant to almost every species of bee that i've ever encountered here out on the homestead. Our honeybees love it. In fact, I'm going to show you a couple pictures of sunflower heads now so that I can explain this a little bit better. So just I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, sunflowers are very popular around our place and um, the bees love them. One of the reasons why is if you look at a typical sunflower head, every single little one of the brown specks in the middle there is a mini flower and it just has a bunch of petals on the outside as well. But there can be up to basically 2,000 mini flowers on one sunflower head. So if you're a bee, that's a heaven. Okay, and also it's a pretty high quality nectar that they can get out of there and good, good pollen as well for some varieties of sunflowers. You can also buy sunflowers that don't have pollen um, or much of it that are, those were designed for the florist industry. They're not usually the ones that I'm going to grow around here because I'm growing ones that are for my birds and my bees and this year for me as well. Sunflowers are amazing. They have been domesticated here and used in agricultural practices in North America for at least 5,000 years, we've found in the archaeological record. So that's pretty cool. Um, just like squash and beans and um, corn, which were all domesticated and used agriculturally here in North America, so, are sun so were sunflowers. Now, when Europeans came, to North America, they discovered these beautiful plants that the indigenous people were using, brought them back to Europe. And a lot of the varieties that we grow today are, are varieties that were hybridized back in Europe and then brought back here. If I show you some sunflower seeds here, I've got a couple of varieties. Okay, these big seeds are the ones that you're probably used to eating. And these little seeds are more of oil producing seeds. Okay, but birds love them 
as well. So I grow both varieties. Well, actually, I grow about six varieties of sunflower. Um, some for us to eat, some for the birds to eat. Okay. I'm also growing most, most varieties of sunflower are annual. Okay. And there's lots and lots and lots of varieties of sunflower, but there is one variety in particular that's perennial and is grown as a food crop. Okay. And that is the, the sunchoke that is a member of the sunflower family. And it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's pronounced Helianthus tuberoso or something like that because it produces these tubers. And this is a perennial crop. I am planting a patch of this this year. One thing I, I will say with a warning, or actually two things I'll say as a warning about uh, sun chokes in particular. They do produce great big beautiful flowers and if you do dig down you get these tubers which you can eat as a roasted potato, like very similar to the way you would a potato but they are gaseous causing their tubers that um, a lot of people find out the hard way do cause quite a significant amount of gas. And also it's an extremely invasive species. So I'm growing these not mostly for me to eat, but for my, my honeybees. And what I'm gonna do is place them in a raised contained bed, okay? Because I have seen and heard many horror stories about somebody planting a couple of those and then ending up taking over spots, which can happen with some perennial plants. And this sunchoke is, is definitely one of them. Now, um, we know that we can eat sunflower seeds and uh, I don't tend to eat a lot of the seeds myself, but I did do a lot of sprouting with them this year. So we're gonna grow this this year, not just for the beauty, which is significant. The sunflowers are so cheery and beautiful to have around, but um, I also am growing it more as a food crop for me this year because I like to, I found that um, sprouting my own microgreens from my own sunflowers was very, very rewarding. And so I'm almost out of those now. And I only have these three little heads left for my birdies. So I wanna grow more this year. So I will be harvesting those seeds and it's really quite easy to do. You just basically let the sunflower dry in place is what I do. And then when it comes time, I just start popping these off. Okay, it's easily done. Um, and, and then I pop them, I let them dry. Once they're dry completely, I, I store them in nice little um, paper baggies until it's time to use them, okay, in the spring. Now, another way that I'm gonna try eating this year is um, I've tasted last year some steamed sunflower buds. I've got some nice multi-head varieties of sunflowers. My bright bandolier usually produces several heads on one stalk. So I'll leave a few to flower, but I will also pick some of those prior to flowering when they're nice full bud. And then you eat that almost as if you would an artichoke. It tastes very like artichoke and it's, I found it delicious. So I'm gonna grow some of that for me this year. Now, in terms of as a companion plant, I love sunflower as a companion plant, but that's a bit, people have mixed feelings about it. Sunflowers almost have chemical warfare where they try to ward off other plants from growing near them by exuding some, some chemicals that are harmful to other plants and that you shouldn't grow beans next to them. But some of the nicest scarlet runners I've ever had have been climbing up sunflowers. So I have not found this in my garden myself to any major extent that other plants aren't growing near my sunflowers. I grow them quite a bit amongst my squash and my cucumbers and amongst my tomatoes. I find that they bring the pollinators to my garden and I never have to self pollinate like I never have to pollinate my plants even in the greenhouse if I grow sunflowers in there. So I guess if you're a little worried about it, what you could do is you could grow a few big pots of sunflowers in your, in amongst your, your other plants as a companion plant. But I know that um, historically it was considered to be the fourth sister in the three sister planting method, which was practiced by a lot of people, a lot of indigenous peoples in North America. The Iroquois in particular coined the phrase of three sisters. And that's when you grow beans, corn 
and squash all together as sort of a triad of things that grow together and support each other with the nutrition and also the physical support and climbing ability that they provide. And apparently the sunflowers were planted inst amongst those those three sister combinations as well to help with the pollination that they're worth it for a companion plant for me particularly now as I've also taken to eating them myself so I really enjoy this plant for my southern Alberta homestead helps my bees um, gets the pollinators in there my birds love it and I enjoy eating it too so it's a bit of a no-brainer for me and um, if you are considering an easy plant that also will make your kids happy, try putting a few sunflowers in your garden. Maybe just don't put it right next to your potatoes because apparently that's not a good combination. But uh, it certainly brings a lot of cheer to the garden. And on these cold days, it's one of the things I'm most looking forward to see. So if you have any questions about this or any of the other plants that we grow here or things we're doing with the animals, let us know. And I hope you'll take this chance to grow together today. Have a good one.